Hello and howdy, my name is Alyssa Nichol and you're watching the Angular and Kendo Unite video series. This is video number two, where we're going to talk all about buttons. So in the first video, we were able to get our app created, our Angular app, and we were able to install Kendo and start using our very first component, which was the button. However, we didn't have time to cover everything there is because there's so many, many more options. So let's get started. So here we have our app with the buttons we built last time in the button control panel component. We have a K block, a Kendo block, and inside that we've got our list of buttons with multiple different appearances, the default outline bear, and then of course the default without strictly specifying the default appearance. Um, so yes, these were our buttons and that is where we were at. Uh, so next up, I wanted to show that you can actually add a couple other things. So right now we can we are controlling the appearance um, with this look property binding, but you can actually do multiple things like disabled, uh, set a button as a primary action, um, or even make a button toggleable or give it an icon. So let's get started and I'll show you those things. But all of them have to do with property binding. So as you would probably anticipate, uh, disabling a button um, we will go ahead and say uh, disabled is equal to true. And so we just set disabled equal to true. Save it. Refresh the page. Oh, <laughs> so it's generally a good idea to actually start your application with ng-serve. Um, before anticipating anything to show up on the page. <laughs> okay, uh, so yes, we started our app, refresh again. Are we on chunk optimization? Yes, we were. And so now that final button in the list is disabled. It's pretty easy peasy. Uh, let's go ahead and create another button with, um, so on this one, we want to go ahead and make it our primary button. So I'm going to say um, primary action here. Not super boring, but it'd be something like on the bottom of a form, it would say save, or um, on the bottom of a shopping cart page, it would say check out, right? So this is actually the primary action of the page. And we would set primary here equal to true as you would probably anticipate. So now, if we go back over here, we should have, yes, a primary action button here. Beautiful and orange. Uh, next up, uh, toggleable. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this one, but instead of primary, we want it to be toggleable. Now, toggleable is actually spelled E-A-B-L-E. -E. Um, however, the property binding is spelled without the E. I think we ran out of vowels. <laughs> so make sure you spell toggleable without the E. Go back, click. Ooh, look at that. Toggle, 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 toggle. Okay. You with me so far? Yes, everything's starting to click. So the last and final one um, that we're going to talk about right now is icons. So you can actually set icon equal to, and instead of a Boolean, like we've been doing, it's actually going to be a string with the icon name. So let's look at calendar. That one is pretty scandalous. <laughs> um, and instead of saying primary action, we're going to say on this one, icon button. And this one is actually going to be toggleable okay so back over here and you can see uh we've got the icon button super sexy uh with the calendar icon and you might be pondering to yourself how do i know what icons i have available to me um you know because i can just kind of go through <laughs> a couple that come to the top of my mind right now i know right um but actually, it's because Kendo UI has its own icon font that we are just utilizing right now by setting icon equal to bleh, uh, check user or um, what was my other one? Calendar, yeah. Let's go ahead and look at a bunch of these together. Okay, so you might be wondering where are these icons coming from? 
So if we go ahead and go to our docs, which I have copied in my paste bar, um, underneath buttons inside of icon button, um, we talk about how we have built in Kendo UI icons. And on our icons page in the docs, it talks about what fi what bleh, bleh. <laughs> what font icons are, um, why use them, how to use them. Um, and at the very bottom, below even customizing them, you'll see an actual list of our font icons. And so you can search by these categories or you can just scroll down and check them out. And so yes, that is how uh, we know which icons are available to us. So on the next part, I'm gonna go ahead and comment out these because I want to play with our beautiful icon buttons. And up here, we did make a K block, um, which allowed us to do an outline around our button list. However, we do have a button group inside of Kendo UI. So I can go ahead and say um, button, it's actually not just button, Kendo, excuse me. And then inside our Kendo button group is where we would like to put our buttons. Uh, ba -bum. And we don't want that, thank you very much. And there, okay. So you can actually wrap your buttons in a Kendo button group. And if we go back over here, you'll see that they're nicely together. And on the outside, um, the buttons have a nice rounded edge, whereas on these middle buttons, it's uh, squared off. So it looks like they are one cohesive group, which is super nice. Um, so let's go ahead and comment out our K block as well, because I just want to look at our button group. So yeah, um, that's a really cool thing that we have with button groups. You can also set your button groups to have a width, again, with property binding uh, to 100. And if we go back, we should see that, yes, it takes up the full width and is responsive. Now, if I do, uh, let's see, command minus... We were at 400%, so if we go down to 100%, you see it's long and skinny, um, but it's making them responsively fit like so. So yes, um, if we go back up to full 100%, because I am a fan of zoomed in, <laughs> um, and go back over to our button group, there's a couple other features I wanted to talk about. Um, one of which we already talked about how we can change the individual appearance of each button. And you can actually do that to all the buttons quite easily when they're inside of a Kendo button group. So up here inside the Kendo button group, you can just say look equals, and then we were saying things like default, outline, so let's go ahead and try outline. And as you can see, it popped over to outlining. So now, instead of outline, let's go ahead and try bare. Go back over here, and they are bare. So yes, uh, that is actually a lot simpler and a lot less typing that you have to do um, for the Kendo button group. Uh, we can also go into each one of these, and I wanted to show doing toggleable, uh, which again, remember, don't spell it with the E. Uh, is equal to true and I really like how the kendo button groups look with uh, toggleable on these so it's very it's very nice it's very good um, and we can go ahead and try instead of that one let's try outline go back to this one so yeah I think that looks really good and um, it's just so simple and so easy to do uh, with Kendo, with the Kendo button group. So I hope you've enjoyed learning more about Kendo buttons. And there's actually two extra components, the drop down button and the split button that we don't have time to dive fully into in this video series, but our docs talks all about and we have amazing examples. So do check those out if you're curious and I'll see you back here for the next video in Angular and Kendo Unite.